All right. Hey, everybody. I see we have a lot of people in chat already. That is fantastic. I'm so happy. So we're going to be doing this cute guy today. Isn't he awesome? So this is Mr. Gingerbread Man. He's cute. And I think he's adorable. He's but super I, cute. <laughs> I wanted to show you guys the rest of the set. So And I changed the files so Mrs. Gingerbread Man has the stippling on it. So this is Mrs. and she's wearing a matching scarf. And then this is Baby. Isn't he cute? I think I'd like the outside to be white, though. So I want to see your nails. Oh, sure. They are snowflakes with holographic flakes in them. Isn't that pretty? I didn't have a gingerbread man uh, nail plate, so I couldn't do gingerbread man. But maybe that's something that Santa Claus will bring me. Santa Claus? Maybe. There we go. Sorry. Don. Yeah. Here we go. Sorry. Jeez. <laughs> so thank you. Yes, so my, my nails are flowy, beautiful, sparkly. You'll see the sparkles in them. So yes, thank you for reminding me to show off my nails. That's awesome. I love it. I love it. I have so much fun doing nails. So this is what we're working on. These two could be a bonus. And I think Karina's also already made a note in there. Thank you for all your help, Karina. And of course, for all the mods in the OML Embroidery Facebook group. Thank you for all your help. This is fantastic. So I love this guy. Let's look at the back. I forgot to change my thread. So that's why you see this little black part here. Um, you got to have matching bobbin for the back. But this guy is simple and cute and looks absolutely awesome on, you know, for a mug rug. It's a mug rug. I'm sure you could do different things with it. Oh, we have a uh, Beetlejuice. Beetlejuice, go lie down. Don't let him out. So isn't that cute? So the white is the icing. I really love it. I love gingerbread men things. And I just thought it would be really cute to do. So, okay, before we get started, uh, we've got to announce a winner. Uh, Don and I made a mistake. We sent last week's winner to, to, who was it to, Don? Anyways, we sent the wrong one. We feel kind of bad. So last week's winner gets um, Fireside Santa. We've already sent it out. There should be, you know, a tracking to it. So this week's winner is going to get these gorgeous letters. And it's a beautiful design. I actually have one more to give away, so we'll work on that. But isn't this gorgeous? And are you ready, Don? Yep. The winner is... Cynthia Allison. So Yay, congratulations, Cynthia. Cynthia. Isn't that awesome? Cynthia Allison. Uh, thank you, Debbie, for $10. Ooh, thank you, Debbie. We appreciate that. Thank you very much. It's hard for me to keep up with the um, chat, but I can certainly see the super chats and the stickers they show up. So, Cynthia, send me an email, sue at omlembroidery.com, and we will send this out to you next week. So I can put that aside somewhere so we don't make any mistakes. This week's giveaway is this. It's called Christmas Elegance 2. And it is uh, gorgeous. I don't know how well you can see that it's a bit reflection-y. We, we move stuff around, but Santa is gorgeous. The amount of detail work in it, it's also applique. But you get uh, 33 designs and they're all equally as stunning. Like they're literally amazing. I'm just trying to get it so there we can go. see it. Is that good? That's good. So swirlies, look at this is gorgeous. The uh, ornaments, the everything. Oh, I just love it. I want to stitch some of these out um, and maybe make some of them into mug rugs because that's my thing. I want to be the mug rug queen of the world. So that is for, okay, so hoop sizes range from 4x4 four four to 6x10, by, by not all designs show. So different sizes and everything. So that's the prize for this week, a whole collection. So let's put that aside. And let's talk about what we're doing today. Now, in the description of the video and of the event in the group, 
um, I let you know what you need. So the first thing you need is water soluble stabilizer. And I already have mine hooped, five by seven hoop. Hey. And I, uh? Sorry, but now that you stopped, thank you, Jill, for five euros. Ooh, thank you very much. Thank you. Oh, I love the green. I think like, that's euro. Yeah. yeah. No, that's pounds. Oh, she's in, she's in UK. Shoot me. Uh, can I? No. <laughs> Are you sure? Was, no. Are you sure? No. He's no fun. So, water soluble stabilizer. I prefer wholeheartedly, hands down, the fabric type. This is the fabric type, especially for doing mug rugs because it has a little more substance to it and it makes a big difference. The other one, like the plasticky looking kind, is uh, it tends to break apart too quickly and it's probably more expensive. And I saw today on Facebook, I don't know where it was, someone wanted to know if they could use press and steel seal instead of water soluble stabilizer. I'm gonna say that's a hard no. Please don't use kitchen stuff on your machine. Do you have your Nerf gun with you? Karina wants to know. Uh, it's always under my desk. It's <laughs> duct taped to the desk. <laughs> Can you get my Maverick, Don? You know where it is. Don's going to get the Maverick. Oh, like I'm fine? like, it might have fallen. Because we moved. Right it's moved the white thing. It's behind there. So anyways, don't use any, 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 any kitchen stuff on your beloved machine right get the right stuff get the good stuff this stuff i think is from super punch so yes okay so here is my maverick that is duct taped to the bottom of my desk <laughs> so i literally can shoot dawn no give him back yes so uh yeah and it's loaded and ready to go we do have nerf wars in this house it's perfectly acceptable so, okay, it's duct taped to my other desk. That's the thing. So I am going to use felt for my guys. You don't have to at all. I thought it gave it a nice look and I thought it was really good. You can use regular fabric. I just happened to find felt that is gingerbread color. So that's what I used. And, uh, or you could use... You know, even what about fabric with a gingerbread design on it, cookies or something like that. So think outside the box. And for his bow tie and for the missus, her scarf, I used this really loud fabric <laughs> that Don bought. <laughs> and I said, what am I going to use this for? It is perfect for his bow tie, though. It it's perfect it's absolutely perfect. I know. Thank you, Ronog, for 22 kroners. Ooh. And Renee Edwards, S-E-K, is that kroners too? I think so. 30 kroners. Appreciate it. Well, thank you very much, everyone who's donating. We appreciate it so much. I put a lot of time and effort and money into the mug rugs and all the camera stuff. And we really want to keep this going. So any donations really help. So, okay, loud, ugly fabric, and you just need a scrap, and leave another scrap for Mrs. if this works out, and it's perfect. It's perfect and perfectly easy. So felt, now if you're using felt, you don't necessarily have to use uh, batting. I like it because it makes it look uh, thicker, like you can see the amount Without the stitches, you can see the amount of loft it gives misses. And I think that's cool. I like it, and it absorbs more. But I have this super thick stuff, so it kind of all I like almost, the bow tie. I like the bow Bow ties are cool. Anyone know what that's from? Come on. <laughs> I think we did that one before. Thank you, Gail. Tips for four ninety nine. Ooh, thank you, Gail. Thank you very oh, much. Look, and it's a working out pair. Keep, Keep it, it up. up. <laughs> I will. I will. We're trying. We're working on it. So I have really unreasonably thick batting. It's almost impossible. Don's going to have to drive into the city and get some good stuff for buy the expensive stuff for me. It kind of sucks. Well, but I can. There's lots of people helping out. Thank you, Angela. 
for ten dollars thank you very much we and i like the animation that's a super sticker isn't it yeah it, it's like bowing sort of thing i love it i love it we we appreciate all the donations and if you're unable to donate we do understand but please like and share the video and watch it all that helps us too yeah it really does if you were we're gonna go for a world record in likes this time and watching the whole video and sharing it that's what gets the channel going and that's free for you guys to do right it doesn't cost you any money so Effort, effort. So, okay, people know bow ties are cool is from Doctor Who. I don't know if you can see it, but I do have my TARDIS on hand. It's a Lego TARDIS because, of course, I love Lego. Of course I love Lego. Come on. Come on. And I'll keep my TARDIS maybe here. Yeah. Oh, I guess you just see in the top of it, right? And if you open it up, he's in there. <clears throat> I think it's the 11th Doctor. He's in there. It's super cute. It's super cute. I know. Not as cute as Gingerbread Man. No, I love the Gingerbread Man. I think my favorite, it's a tough call, but I think Gingerbread Baby is probably my favorite. I just think he's adorable. I don't know which is the best, but I think the set is fantastic. But we're going to start with Gingerbread Man. So before I go to switch over to the machine... Is there, are there any questions? Any at all? So everyone's saying hi. My partner has a salt and pepper TARDIS. I don't have one of those. Why don't I have, I have. Uh, uh, I will find you one. Oh, but don't say it like that. <laughs> I'll find you one. Thank you, Cheryl, for $5. Thank Ooh, you. Canadian. Ooh, Canadian. Wow, that's awesome. Thank you very much to everyone who is donated. How do you get entered into the giveaway? Just by being here. That's all you have to do, and, Tammy. And participate in the chat. Yep. Jackie San Pedro, $5. Thank you very much. You guys are awesome today. So are we ready to stitch this guy? You can stitch I... your very own mister. Wait, wait. wait. Okay, I think we're ready. What what am I waiting for? It was just dramatic pause for effect. <laughs> That's awesome, Don. <laughs> it isn't. I'm just trying to be nice because he's controlling the whole thing. Yes, Don. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yes, ready. Okay, so we're going to put this guy aside. We're going to take all of our su supplies and let's switch the camera over to McDreamy. Yay, McDreamy. Does McDreamy look good? Oh, ow. <laughs> you know what? Switch back for a second and unplug and plug it in. Okay. What am I on? Yeah. Did it work? I think so. I think that's all right. No flicker. I'm happy with that. So I have loaded up the design and it looks like there's a lot of steps but there aren't really because it's all the applique pieces right so the first step is we are going to stitch down uh just a placement line for us now again i always tell you guys i'm using bright colors for my thread for all these if i use white which would be preferable um, it's going to stand, not stand out and you really can't see it. So I'm choosing bright colors, um, and hopefully they'll cover up, uh, just so you guys can see it. So let's do the outline and the outline is his face and the bow tie all at once. So go McDreamy, go. I forgot to check the bobbins, so hopefully we don't run out. That's okay. It's, it, it's an easy fix, but normally I do that before we start. So, little loose stitches here, but he's just waking up. It's probably because I need to change the bobbin, right? <laughs> yeah, come on, McDreamy. McDreamy may need some caffeine. Let me, I'm just going to check the bobbin here just for a sec. Oh, yeah. That's why. See, now I had loose stitches. And the reason is I am at the end of the bobbin and the tension goes a little bit off. I don't need to worry about it, but see, this is the problem. See how off it is. 
So don't keep stitching if you see tension like that. It's a uh, quick fix. The first thing I look for is bobbin. Now I am looking for a bobbin, but let's see. There, that one. So yeah, if you have tension issues, that's, that's the first thing. And we'll just get this fixed. See, I knew I should have checked it beforehand. However, it gave you guys a perfect example of you know, tension issues and how you fix it. And that is how you fix it. It was easy. It was easy. Now, I am not going to redo this part because it's only an outline and I can see where it's going to go. You use pre-wound bobbins, right? Yes. Yes. The only time I wind a bobbin is for, you know, matching the outside threads sort of thing, which most of the time, honestly, I forget to do, <laughs> but it's okay. Yeah, pre-round, I do a whole lot of stitching. Just remember for McDreamy, if you have a McDreamy, which is a brother Dream Machine 2, he takes different size bobbins than the other machines. So you got to make sure, I think they're A's instead of L's. Make sure you get the right kind. So I am laying down my felt and my super thick batting and I've cut it to size I just cut the felt in half to be honest with you and I know it's gonna fit so I'm not worried so let's stitch this down everything good Don everything looks good McDreamy is gonna stitch much better now I know I didn't change the needle and you don't have to worry about the thickness or anything Don is right here. You kind of scared me, man. What's uh, up? I'm sorry. I was reading. Oh. Don't Somebody you... was asking if, if the um, the other ones were available yet, and they're not available yet. Uh, Karina will tell you why. But Karina will tell you why. Um, yeah. And it's... They can be. All right. So I stitched it down twice. Now, at this point, you can do the trimming but we really don't need to until the end when we put the back on and then we're just going to trim everything out at once you can though if you want to i would i'm just going to leave it we'll do it all at once now we're going to do the uh stitches quilting stitches because i think it looks really pretty now you got to put these down first but look it's nice and puffy i love it is yeah. there is there other questions? Norseman's in the house. Norseman's in the house. Thanks Yay. for the coffee money, Norseman. Oh, uh, he's awesome. Every time, every time, Karina and her husband, the Norseman, All donate. All donations are designated as my coffee fund. Really now? <laughs> really? Really? That's a bold statement, Mr. Brown. Is it really now? Really now? Yes, it's for Don's coffee, because if I don't caffeine him, he'll press a button and blow up the whole scene here or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yes, you got to know when to give him caffeine and when not to give him caffeine, right? So, all right, I can't see anything over there for questions, but I also, um, we're using basic colors, so you can grab, you know, brown, red for the bow tie, or change the bow tie to a different color whatever fabric you have you can change the outline you don't have to keep it red but this is just uh, sort of like a medium brown so any shades of brown I didn't think beige worked very well and really dark you might think it's black so sort of a medium brown for it pink for the cheeks and white of course for the outside icing I think the brown's perfect yeah, it's just a brown I just kind of picked. There's not even much on the spool, so it, it kind of works. What's that? Thank you, Elizabeth Chapman, for $5. Thank you. Oh, that's awesome. We appreciate it. I, I'm so thankful you guys are donating. Uh, it just enables us to get more stuff, like cords, so our cameras don't blink. But <laughs> there's that, nothing we can do about it. Uh, unfortunately, McDreamy Cam is blinking a little bit. Ah, uh, well. It is what it is. I, we can't seem to fix it. I don't know. It was an expensive enough camera. What I need is to start a GoFundMe for a DSLR. I want a DSLR done. No. They're expensive. And he said no. 
He said no. I know. Are there any questions, Don? You have to read them. My iPad is too far away from me now. See how pretty that brown is right there? I love it. And I love the shape. I think the shape is really can, cool. Can you use flex foam or the puppy foam instead of matting? Um, well, I've never tried that. Uh, you could, I guess. You could try it. You may end up with, uh, with it not sitting as flat if you did that, though, right? Well, this kind of would cut into it. You know what? That's a good it, experiment. It, it might. It I'll, might be worth trying. I have some, and I will give it a try and report to you guys. Can you write that down? Uh, I will. Let the dog in first. But and Thank you, Louise, for four pounds. Four pounds? You said it was pounds. It's pounds. That's the UK. I used to live in the UK, and I love it there. Pounds. Pounds is awesome. So yes, okay, that is an absolutely fantastic question. And you know what? I am going to experiment with it and see if that'll work. I, I'm thinking batting is probably a lot cheaper than the puffy foam stuff, but you know, you can go to Michael's and try the, the thicker foam they have there. My only hesitation is that when you stitch in it, it perforates. So that might be a problem or not. I don't know. But yeah, you might make a good mug rug out of it. So write that down, Don. I will do a video. I'm going to start doing um, one or two videos during the week, maybe Wednesday, so we can work on different things. All right. So we've done that. We are our gingerbread guy is taking shape. Now we are going to do the applique on the bow tie. So let's outline it so we know where our fabric will go. So you could have a lot of fun with this fabric because you really only need a tiny piece of it. And I think it's going to be like, look how small it is. So you could use any scrap of anything to do to use on it. And it just you know, brightens this guy up. He's happy to wear a bow tie. All right, so yeah, you can see on the fabric where I did, that's the scarf. And this one over here is the other one that I made. What so, are you gonna use that loud material for? Ties and scarves. <laughs> okay. Or the backs of- The backs, yeah. put it on the back. Put it, not on this one. I have felt on the back. The back is going to be just <laughs> as pretty as the front. It's a bit loud, Don. I mean, I said get me Christmas material. And it's he, Christmas. But it's just loud. It's, it screams. That's how loud it is, Don. It screams, okay? It's a little screamy. So there we go. Round about twice. Very nice. Just hold everything in. You don't really have to go around it twice, but I like it. Don't bang so loudly. Thank dreamy. you, Deborah, for five dollars. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. All right, let's switch back to my desk, and we're gonna trim this out with our scissors. Are we good? Yes, we're good. We move stuff around and change the lighting, so hopefully. It is all going to I be think better. The is fabulous. Yeah, I think I've finally got it set up perfectly. So now I'm going to trim very carefully. I know it's only a small piece, but I'm still going to trim it very carefully. And I just sharpened my duckbill scissors, and uh, they're working much better. So yeah, not not really a scrap buster um, mug rug, but it is going to use up a scrap so keep your little pieces of your favorite fabric and you can make bow ties and scarves there we go so almost done just perfect see now if you're really good you could fussy cut something in there that would look good although remember that there's going to be satin stitches going over it look, so okay let's this... see somebody somebody's delivering a coffee to me oh <laughs> Thank you, Chris Yost, for three ninety nine. Don and thinks, the coffee pair. Don <laughs> thinks it's all about him. Isn't he funny? It can be all about me once in a while. No, Don, it's not. I said no. Why is the beagle one out again? 
I don't know, but if he's out, he's quiet. Yeah, well, he's pacing around. I wish our darn children would get up and watch the dogs. I'm not so, sure why they're not. very nice look. How great that looks. Let's take it back to McDreamy. Thank you, Becky Bell, for two dollars. Thank you very much. All right, now I am gonna change thread. Are we back over? Yep. Yep. I'm going to change the thread because it has a little knot or something. Hey, McDreamy, there we go. Um, to bow tie color. Now I chose a really bright red because the fabric is, you know, really loud. I think green would have worked. Um, possibly yellow, possibly yellow, but I just thought red might calm the whole thing down again. Um, but I'm kind of thinking right now yellow would have been really good as well. Um, oops, but bright red, I thought it looked really good. So now we're going to do some detail work and then we're going to get that applique fabric down so let's get started on the red bow tie or whatever color that you want um i think it would be you know say blue christmasy i think that would be good as well uh anything i think anything goes and again like i said you could fussy cut something small in the middle and that would look good but i just like the random thing so yes Yes, he could have a glittery bow tie. For sure he could. Yeah, I'm not using any metallic thread on this guy. Hmm. I just realized that. You could. Do you, do you ever have trouble with freedom from your applique sticking out with the stitches? Not, not usually. I do the cover stitches tight enough. Like, wide enough. Um, yeah. You just gotta take your time trimming. I yeah. think that's the most important it's, thing. It's practice in your precision trimming. Yep. And that's why I take it off of my machine and put it on my table because then I can, you know, move it around so the duckbill scissors are in the right place and I get a better trim out of it. So the key is patience, time, positioning, and a nice pair of trimming scissors. If you have big scissors, you can still trim it out. It, it won't matter too much. The ductile ones I like, but any applique scissors. But just, yeah, take your time. Absolutely take your time. If you have really crappy um, fabric to applique, then you can iron a little bit of um, iron-on stabilizer on the back just to keep it from... Uh, you know fraying sort of things so like heat and bond you can just put some of that on the back and you could iron it down if you wanted to too it's awesome so that will help that'll get you more of a precision cut what don's up there i'm, I'm looking thank you karina for 20 kroners karina and she's asking how do you sharpen your duckbill scissors oh i can show you that can you get my sharpener um, it's in the top drawer the white top drawer. Yep. Very good question, Karina. This is what I use. There was a couple people asking about it. Okay. I'll show you guys when next time we switch over to the desk. It's hard to see, yeah. I guess. It is a scissor sharpener, but I'm going to put it right at my desk, and next time we switch over, I'll show you how to do it. It's awesome. So, yeah, coming along. Nice, nice, nice. See, I do really like the red. I do really like it. Oh, I forgot a black. I need black thread. I thought I pulled all the colors. Well, okay, I don't have a black, so we're gonna do navy blue for his eyes. Just a little bit different. There's no reason why he can't have blue eyes, right? He's a pretty guy. <coughs> Maybe that would be a great place to use metallic thread, is the silver around his eyes. That that might work. Carmen says that the red thread on the bow tie really makes it pop. Yeah, and that's what I was going for. I wanted it to stand out um, over the beautiful fabric that Don chose. 
So that's it for red. Hey, stop picking on me about my material choose. I <laughs> choose your material choices. I said choosing, but choices. Choosing, yes. yes. Sorry, Don. Grammar, please. <laughs> uh, yeah, sorry about that, too. I can't help myself. It's all good. We're, we're very grammar grammary. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. My children are probably like, Mom! There we go. So we're going to check this out with, like, a navy blue. And, oh, someone donated on omlembroidery.com. Thank you very much. Yes. I can't see who it is right now. I, I believe I thank them, although it could, there could have been more than one. Okay, it just came up on my watch. So we're going to do like a darkish blue. I just happen to have it beside me on my trolley that I use, that I, I move around to the machines, which which has all of my supplies. See, I never thought of that blue. Why not? What do you guys think? Like a dark blue or a light blue? I like to change it up. Sometimes I even change it up at the machine, but... Yeah, I think I like it. It's hard to tell yet. Renee says it looks like you planned out your placement with the red dot up at the top. Yeah, that's almost perfect. And these ones are full dots, so it looks better. I would like maybe the, the snowflake over, but a snowflake in the middle would look cute too. Yeah, I like the blue. What do you think, yeah. Don? A couple people are saying blue. Yeah, why not? I didn't think of that in my test stitches and a lot of cool stuff happens right at the machine right at the machine but that's okay sometimes the mistake ends up being better sometimes <laughs> it does yeah i forget to change a thread and i go oh yeah hmm, that's cool i like the christmas trees that people have been stitching and posting out in the group um i think cindy king Who's awesome? She did a pink and turquoise one with turquoise uh, metallic thread, just gorgeous. A couple other people have done blue ones and different colors and the Christmas fabric. It's spectacular. I think it's amazing. All right, so I'm saying full speed ahead for the blue. I like it. I I don't think I would like it if it was light colored blue, but I like it. Can I help you, Don? I lost it. It scrolls so Louise quickly. Said they, t they told their 13 year old, saw it and asked what it was. And so she said it was a gingerbread man asked where the body was. Oh. Did somebody eat it? <laughs> <laughs> well, very nice. It's possible. And it was probably Don who ate it. It's just a face to put a cup on, which sounds really terrible. But yeah, I, I'm going to be doing a gingerbread man like the whole part of them on a mug rug too because i really like it it's cute and thank you jet jet mail i hope i said that right for five dollars oh appreciate thank it. you very much we appreciate it so now we're gonna do the cheeks and i thought instead of just doing tatami stitches or phil stitches or even satin stitches for this detail i used a spiral stitch just to be different just to be different so i enjoy actually watching this stitch out because it's so cool isn't that neat oh i love it and then i made some really great connections right here that we can hide underneath the mouth and then straight to the next one so no jump stitches no trims just straight up is that cute I just thought it added to the design. You were saying something, Don? It was I, I said say hello to Cindy. I already said hello to Cindy. Oh. Hello, Cindy. I can say hello again. Hello, Cindy. I, I just saw it after you did, I guess. Sorry. <laughs> I can't see the chat from here. We moved everything around, so it's a little bit different. I guess I could have moved my iPad closer. So here we are. The last color is white. I don't know if it's actually it's the super very cute last. Already. I know, and the blue eyes. Let's see what the does. Oh, I bumped the camera. Darn! I thought I was gonna have a camera bumping free time, <laughs> but no. no. But no. no. Thank you, Lee Jane, for two ninety nine. Oh, thank you very much. 
Well, you guys are awesome today. So we have a good view. Are we happy with the view, Don? Yes. I think we need to make sure it stays that way. So we're now doing the icing uh, gingerbread hair. So I just chose white, um, but I think you could do it in any other color. I was just sticking with the, you know, old fashioned traditional colors, but you could do whatever you wanted. And it's starting at the top and it's gonna work its way down. So there are trims on this one. There's no connections possible because of the space yeah. between. Tammy J says that you need to do a video to show how you do your nails from start to finish. <laughs> <laughs> well, I could. I could. I do them every week, so I could. Yeah. It's fun. Like my kids sit and watch me do my nails. Like, wow, mom, that's nice. So the twinkle in his eye and then the highlight around his eye. And you know what? I like the blue. That was a great discovery. I like the blue. And you know what? This guy is almost done, it, believe it or not. I love him. I love his cheeks and the bright bow tie. So it's perfect use of ugly Christmas sweater fabric. <laughs> We're still picking on you, Dawn. There we go, so the highlights. Yeah, I do like the blue. We have uh, light blue eyes in my family, like pale blue, so that would be cool to do that as well. Now we're gonna do his happy smile because the snowman, or the snowman, whoo, thinking snowman. The gingerbread guy is just so happy to be stitched. Right, Don? Is that, is that the truth? So just his mouth, and then we have a weird color change, and that is going to indicate that we put uh, the fabric on the back. Gail says that you do a great job of digitizing. Your trees looked as good on the front as they did on the back. Yay! Oh, thank you, Gail. Yes, I'm very picky digitizer, and I test everything out and tweak it a little bit sometimes. It's, yeah, it's got to be done right got to be done right and I've taught you guys everything I know in the videos on the channel from start to finish on a lot of things so awesome so mouth is done mouth. almost I like it he's just happy thank you Sandy for ten dollars Ooh, thank you very much okay so now in our list we have just an outline and that is for the back. So we're not doing the folded fabric back on this one. We are going to put a proper back. This is when you would need to change the bobbin to match your outside. Now I am choosing white so I don't have to worry about it. And look, you can peek through and make sure that you're putting the fabric in the correct spot. Now, if you had cut all this, you'd be able to see it a whole lot easier. That is a little tip and trick that people forget, but see, you can see right through. I know I have proper coverage, so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, stitch it down. And then we're going to do some trimming and I'll show you guys how I sharpen my scissors. So this is just for stitching down the back if you are using fabric, make sure you place it face down. That's how this one goes. So the pretty side down. And you can use tape if you need to. Uh, McDreamy doesn't like to be taped at all, so I tend not to. And plus, I'm using felt, so it's gonna stay. I'm pretty confident that it's gonna stay. And I just tucked it underneath, so, you know, you don't need to complicate stuff. There we go. So now, we got to do some trimming. Let's do some trimming. So I'm going to flip as soon as he's done his dance. I'm going to flip to my desk and we are going to work on the trimming. Well, we'll have to thank the girls for getting up and watching the beagle. I already did thank them. <laughs> I already did. I know. Sorry. Sorry about our beagle. Okay. So my scissors and this is just from Fiskars. 
and you can purchase it michael's probably walmart in the states probably and it's just a going. sharpener and it doesn't okay it doesn't replace uh professional sharpening like if these were ginger scissors or the really expensive ones i would not use it but these ones are not expensive and this is how you sharpen scissors you know one way then the other and i'm just opening and closing them on there's metal in there that's how i do it i wanted to also take a minute people were asking and i'm just gonna show you guys quickly the uh embroiderer's compass this is something that i think everyone should have so let me show you quickly how it works so if you have something let's see broadcloth or quilting cotton i just move the dial around it tells you medium firm tear away and then gives you comments so let's see vinyl so it gives you all the oh it gives you needles too uh so fabric vinyl soft tear away or medium weight cutaway for higher stitch count this has all the answers and it'll guide you to properly do fabrics like properly pick the back of the stabilizer for any fabric so sweatshirts no show mess mesh or medium cutaway and your needles that are best to use a light ballpoint or 7511 and it tells you how to do it so you guys look into this it's from designs and machine embroidery and it is absolutely spectacular so i just wanted to point that out a couple people were asking and that's the answer you need the embroiderer's com compass they would like to see beetlejuice he's outside and yes you can see him when he comes in we can arrange that i guess we also have an odie wiener uh, but he's upstairs sleeping. We he's could nasty. get him. He's <laughs> he's an older guy, and sadly, our beloved younger wiener passed away a couple of weeks ago. He uh, he hurt his back. Dash hounds are prone to back problems, and he slipped a disc, and he died. And it was very difficult. That was Gallifrey, the black and tan weenie. I I have him in a lot of things. So. We only have two dogs, but Beetlejuice is our rescue dog, and we love him. He's awesome, but he's an in-out dog. He, he's an in-out dog. He's a hunting dog, basically. Can you use a sharpener on double curve scissors? Or not? Well, yeah, it might be a little awkward, but you can. Just remember, if you have expensive sh scissors, don't. <laughs> I, I wouldn't put ginger scissors in it, but... Yeah, made them nice and sharp. They were so dull, I couldn't cut anything. Now, I am cutting the thick felt and the thicker batting separately. Why am I doing this? Because the batting is so thick that it's hard to cut. Make sure, too, when you're using your uh, duckbill scissors, this part is goes on the outside. So what it's designed for is that you don't pick up any of say this stuff is picky look how the scissors get into it and this will give you a smooth cut so that's that's what makes the duck build scissors work properly so if you're not going around the right way i have to figure out how to, oh right here if i was to cut this way the bottom of the scissors, see I have to move it out every time and then carefully move it back in because this part gets caught on the batting. So make sure when you're using your awesome duck build scissors that you do it the right way. Now I also have one of these Fiskars and it makes it easy for uh trimming because you can instead of moving the hoop you can just turn this oh, that's your spinny one yeah i don't want to move my emblem out of the way but it was oh yeah okay i have too much crap here to be able to use it not crap but i have a tardis and i have my gorgeous neck necklace from karina and the norseman and it's always there so i don't really want to move it so see how easy it is to trim and small cuts, sharp scissors, all the difference. I forgot to check. Yes. Okay. Other than a piece of thread, the back is on perfectly. So now I'm going to cut through this horribly thick 
but a little more manageable. Batting. You could use for these, you could also use the really, the more expensive batting. For some reason, it's hard for us to get here. The, uh, I had a little bit of it, but I don't have enough for these. The, what was it called? It's 100% cotton and really nice. We had this discussion last week. I don't remember now. <laughs> I don't remember now either. They. I'll get you some. I just have to go to the fabric store. I think he has some more in. Oh, do you think he has some better stuff? I'm yeah. almost out anyway, so I used up all the okay. really okay. thick. Now, for some things, you know, the really thick batting is fantastic. Like for a Warm quilt. and natural, sorry. Warm and natural. There we go. That is the best stuff, and it really works well for mug rugs. But this thick stuff works well for some things, like uh, quilt square, because you get so much, you know, loft or puffiness that it looks absolutely amazing and we have to thank everyone in chat who reminded us that it's warm and natural <laughs> ah heck we do that i got i got so much in my brain i don't remember everything so awesome cut little little crappy over here but again it's because of the thickness of everything so always take your time always take your time don't overcut but don't undercut either it should be good. Now let's flip it over because we have to cut the back too because we're going to do our final gorgeous stitches. So again, this is when you change your bobbin to match whatever thread you're using on the outside. I'm using white, but you could use anything for it. Look at your chat. Look at my chat, Karina. More good batting for Sue. I just love Karina. More good batting. Thank you very much, Karina. <laughs> Done. So get me more batting so I can stop complaining. Oh, someone in the group put a picture up. I don't remember the name. My apologies. Um, picture up of a whole bunch of pairs of scissors and asked if Don got his they're, scissors. They're on their way. Yeah, he got scissors. Such a big baby. Big baby. This is when also you want the duckbill scissors to like you want to use them properly because you really don't want to poke through your water soluble stabilizer. It's not that delicate, but delicate enough. And for especially for this part, you do not want it to shift at all. So I think gingerbread man or gingerbread boy, whichever you want to call it. Is pretty good. Uh, I, I would have liked to have trimmed it a little bit better, but you know what? I'm pretty sure the satin stitches are going to cover it all and the decorative stitches. So let's take it back to the machine. Are you guys all ready? Are you guys sewing along? That's the question. They're a lot of fun of, uh, for us to do too. <laughs> Linda says she loves the mug rugs and she's making them to hand out at Thanksgiving dinner. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, you know what? Mug rugs is one of my favorite things to do. Um, I enjoy them. I'm going to give you guys a preview of next week's. Are you ready? And it's just going to be a travel through. Ooh. That's all you get. That's next That's week's. It. Right. It's cute. Travel through. All right, let's switch back to McDreamy. So there we go. Are there any questions, Don? I've been trying to keep up. It, it's a lot, isn't it? It gets to be sometimes. Just before I get the machine going. What do you do with all the mug rugs? Well. <laughs> we give them to actually, John's mom. My mom gets most of them. Most Hi, of, mom. We use them around the house. Um, we also give some to, there's a, a yoga company downtown where we live. And they love to have them um, sitting where people relax and whatnot. So... Yeah, we give them away, basically. I just had to reset to quickly there. Sorry, sorry. Now it's still flickering. Oh, well. Okay, so change your bobbin. Change your bobbin. Change your bobbin, everyone. <laughs> I never remember, so that's why I'm saying it. And now we are going to do the finishing stitches. So let it go. These are the satin stitches that are going to cover up all the edges and make everything look fantastic now you could do i could have done 
a zigzag stitch around that would help a little bit but I think it's okay on this one I did the zigzag stitch on the the mom one because the shape is kind of funny so it just helps hold everything down but I find it works perfectly and even though I'm slightly off it still uh, covers everything and he says, can't wait till for next week because that tree looks adorable. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a sneak peek. Um, fun applique. And I love it. That's one of my favorites so far. Other than Gingerbread Man because I just love the Gingerbread Man. So nice size satin stitches and it is covering up everything. So I'm really happy about that. And these stitches make it all look amazing in the end. Uh, I love it. So you don't have to use white, but make sure you match your thread. So Don, any questions? Because we have only eight minutes till this dude is done. What are we? How many people do we have? Two eighty. Two eighty. Oh, you guys rock! That's awesome. 224 likes. Well, you guys are a quarter of the way there. That's awesome. 280. Whoop. I love it. Isn't that awesome, Don? I think that's really incredible. I'm I'm pretty darn happy with that. I wonder if we can break three again. That would be nice. Uh, 350 so is our world record. 350's record, but if we could break three, that'd be cool. You know what happens record-breaking, guys. There's... Oh more giveaways yeah <laughs> yes we have a lot of ways to reward you guys for working so hard on the channel Working for the channel participation gets more rewards yeah it's all free for you guys so pitch in make this work i think it's an awesome you know way of doing this i love the saturday morning uh videos yeah, everybody was saying that they and they have a lot of fun and they look forward to them they're great yeah which is nice and, and, we, and we enjoy doing them Oh yeah, I I love making mug rugs. I have found actually that I love creating the mug rugs and sharing them with you guys uh, just as much as I love stitching, maybe even more. Like coming up with my own original ones and you guys giving them away as gifts and stuff. It is awesome, it makes me happy. Jack so Jackie's asking if it stands up to the heat and I'm assuming she's talking about the mug rug. Uh, I've added. never had any problem. You gotta... We use them for really hot coffee and tea and they work great. Yeah, I haven't had the fabric. I mean, nothing will happen to the fabric. I mean, it's not a trivet, so you don't want to put, you know, your hot pie on it or something. I don't know if it'll hold up to that. Maybe if you did... You can get thicker batting, I think that might be okay. But... You can get the heat-resistant batting. Yeah. If you're just using them for coffee or tea or whatever, which most people cheaper batting most people use, yeah, it'll work fine. If you want it as a trivet, then uh, you have to use a different kind. Thank you, Lila Johnson, for four ninety nine. Ooh, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you. Don's reading. Look at our guy. Next week's Christmas tree was a fun teaser. Can't wait. Yes, yes. It's, it's a really cute mug rug, and I love the design, Chris, and Chris it's Yost, really fun. Sorry. No, go ahead. Chris Yost just bought a new machine and that they need to use, learn, need to learn to use, yep. and they're going to practice with mug rugs. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect. You learn a lot of skills, actually, when you are stitching a mug rug. Different kinds, so folded fabric. Applique, they all have applique on them. Your uh, cutting skills, it is a skill, you have to practice it, uh, and a lot of things. Can you use Scotchgard to help prevent stains on them? Um, I've heard of people using that. I mean, you could just throw it, depending on what kind of felt you're using, or if you're just using fabric, just go ahead and throw them in the washing machine. Just make sure when you iron, embroidery for any embroidery this is polyester thread if you put your iron directly on it with high heat you will melt the thread so you have to be careful when you iron them out to make them flat just use a cover sheet on it and it'll work oh look at that guy he's coming along 
So I have heard of people using Scotch Guard, but in this house, we don't actually worry about it a whole lot. No, we don't have young ones to spill on. Robin says, first time here, really enjoying your video tutorial and the banter. And the banter. <laughs> I think she means you. No, she's talking about the chat. No. No, not me. No. I've got a Nerf gun and I Soon. know how to use it. Dawn. Do you usually use felt? Uh, not always. I just thought for these ones, the the color is what attracted me. And I think felt gives it a different kind of look. And I like it. And there wasn't much piecing. I don't think I would piece and do folded fabric or anything with felt because it's too thick. But felt on the back is always nice. So I thought, eh. So I just took a, a regular piece of felt and I just cut it in half and it happened to be the perfect sizes. And Gwen, Gwen asked if the files need to be unzipped. No, they don't. Nope. We changed because um, people were having a lot of trouble with them. And we so, don't want you guys no, to we have... we want to try to make it easy for you. So yep. if you go into the group, into the file section, you can find um, the machine file format that you need and just download that file. And it's all complete. And, and it's ready to go. So all of the files for any of these videos that I'm doing are free for you guys. And you can download them at the OML Embroidery University Facebook group. They're all there. All we ask in return is that you guys just watch the videos, share them, like them. And what you guys are doing is helping me build up my YouTube channel. So what's the big deal about that? The big deal about it is that there's ads on it and I can get paid by YouTube. So you guys can, can keep getting everything for free and I get actually get paid for it. So that is the idea. And the more you like and the more videos that you watch, especially consecutively, the more YouTube pays attention to me and starts dishing out the videos, which means I can actually make a little bit of money to cover over. So to me, it's a win-win situation. And if you guys work hard enough, we can keep doing this indefinitely. And we don't just have to do mug rugs. I'm right into it right now and having a blast. Or we could, but we can do different things. Uh, the important thing that I can't do is like, share, get more people in, talk to your friends. The, the numbers in the group don't matter. Everything on YouTube does. So that's the whole idea of it. Renee says, thank you for helping out with the problems. Yes, always, yes. We do our best. We, we try to help out as much as we can, and, and our mods do a fantastic job to help out when we can't. Oh, yeah, And everybody sure. else in the group I see is always trying to contribute and help answer questions as well. So, look, our gingerbread guy is done. So, one of my favorite things about this guy is this stitch at the end because it gives him a nice finished look. I love how it looks. I, I just think it's fun, I guess. So all we have to do is we're gonna unhoop them. And look at the back. So the back of it is literally just as pretty as the front. There's a face on the front, but because I had the right color bobbin in, it looks spectacular. And for finishing touches, now because I have water soluble stabilizer, I trim it at about here. Now you don't have to wet the whole thing. You don't have to dunk the whole thing and wait for it to dry. So trim it close, but not too close. There we go, there we go. And then you take a little bowl of water and you can use your finger or Q-tip and you just kind of, I bend it back a little bit and you run it here and it'll come right off. So you end up, up with a perfectly finished edge and I think it looks fantastic. So blue eyes versus black eyes. Darling, cute, he's adorable, he's beautiful, perfect. Yeah, the- he's So Christmassy. So Christmassy, yeah. And you know what? Someone was asking me, what is this, a mug rug or a stuffy? You know, you could put a little clip on it and you could hang this guy up in your tree or just put him in your tree. I think he is cute enough for that. I think it would look, 
I didn't realize I was using two different colors. That's pretty funny. Sandy asked if you um, told them what they what you use in your bo what's in your bobbin. <laughs> I did. <laughs> I made T-shirts on, and they're for sale on the YouTube channel that says "What's in your bobbin." Because I still think that's funny. That's me and my wonky sense of humor. So she said, what's in your bobbin? And I said, I think that's a little personal. I like the t-shirts you made up. They're nice. Yeah, they're cute. We should uh, order some for ourselves. Because yes. I made one that the background is a kaleidoscope of the tree design that we were working on. And I thought that was funny because only the people who were there or watched the video would know what it was. So... Anyways, uh, are there any questions about our gingerbread guy? I think it's a great mug rug. I think the applique with the bright fabric looks fantastic. I think the red looks fantastic. I used an even brighter red on Mr. Blue Eyes than I did on this one. And I really like it. I really like it a lot. And... I used felt, but I think regular fabric will look just as fantastic on it. I just use felt because that's what I had. So thanks everyone for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Sharpen your scissors. Uh, make sure you know for other things what you're doing and keep your embroiderer's compass handy. Have a coffee and put it on your gingerbread man. So thanks, everyone. You saw what we we're going to be doing next week. So I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. Oh, you're going quick. Bye. 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 <laughs>